The government says emerging from lockdown will be a gradual process, not a single leap to freedom. It comes as the Prime Minister prepares to address the nation tomorrow to set out the next phase in tackling the coronavirus pandemic. Today, British Airlines called for clarity after being told that the government will bring in a 14-day quarantine for anyone arriving in the UK from any country apart from the Republic of Ireland. It comes as a further 346 deaths were announced across the UK today. That's in hospitals, care homes and in the community. It takes the official death toll to 31,587. Here's our political correspondent, Ben Wright. The balmy bank holiday weather brought people to the parks. In London, police tried to remind them of the rules. <laughs> While in Leeds, the measures on social distancing were also being stretched in the sun. Just walking to the car to get the dog's ball. People were just walking right close to you on the path, so you had to walk on the road, stay away from them. I think people are just kind of forgetting the seriousness of it all. I think we're getting to a point where we're finding it a bit difficult uh, being at home. But you can see why it's important um, to um, ensure that the lockdown continues for a little while longer. Tomorrow, the Prime Minister will set out a road map for how England might leave the Covid lockdown. And today, one of Boris Johnson's cabinet ministers said the government would proceed with extreme caution. Importantly, it is true to say that moving beyond Covid will be a gradual process, not a single leap to freedom. So when we do emerge, the world will seem quite different. The aviation industry is one of many reeling from the impact of the current coronavirus restrictions. Airlines in the UK say they have been told the government will bring in a 14-day quarantine for anyone arriving from any country apart from the Republic of Ireland. If this is the scientific uh, advice, then absolutely we will um, accept that. The health and safety of our passengers is, is, is paramount. But this will have a you know, significant impact on our, on our sector. Uh, Nobody is going to want to travel if they have to go into quarantine for 14 days. Secretary of State, can you confirm that anyone flying into UK airports will be told to quarantine for 14 days from the start of next month? A lot of people will wonder why this wasn't done weeks ago. Now we have a situation where as we get the R number, the reproduction number down in the UK, and we begin to get things uh, under control, uh, and uh, it, we now have the capacity, as we just discussed in testing as well, it clearly then makes sense to look at what happens at the borders. Um, I can't confirm is the answer. You will have to wait for the Prime Minister tomorrow night. The Prime Minister first announced the current lockdown less than seven weeks ago. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. Like everyone, Boris Johnson is weighing up risk, the need to protect the economy and people's liberty against the fear of a resurgent disease. Ben Wright, BBC News. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps today also called on people to walk and cycle to work once the lockdown restrictions are eased in England, calling this a once-in-a-generation opportunity to transform the way that people get around. Mr Shapps pledged £2 billion from a fund announced in February that could see new bike lanes in England within weeks. Our chief environment correspondent Justin Rowland reports. Travel as lockdown is lifted is a big challenge for the government. The social distancing rules mean buses and trains can carry far fewer passengers. If people take to their cars instead, the roads will be choked with traffic. That's why Transport Secretary Grant Shapps today announced £250 million for English local authorities to widen pavements and install pop-up bike lanes as quickly as possible. So let me give you an idea of how our streets might look if these changes become permanent. I'm in Waltham Forest, they've invested a lot in this kind of thing. And have a look, look at the way the pavement merges into the road. And the idea is it gives pedestrians and cyclists a sense of freedom to move around the space. You see new kinds of street furniture, I think it's called. So benches like this, you see the planter here with trees and a bike park there. And the idea is that we can all move much more freely through this space because there aren't as many cars and lorries coming through. But what about motorists? They've got rights too, and many people will feel more secure from the virus in their vehicles. So what does Britain's biggest motoring association have to say about this? 
Well, contrary to what people say, all our polls actually show that drivers are going to drive less after lockdown, 36% are going to cycle more, walk more, run more. So we do need some radical measures to stop gridlock because public transport won't be able to cope. There will be a voucher scheme so people can have their bikes repaired and, in the longer term, a national cycling commissioner will be appointed. Campaigners hope these changes will be locked in for good. And there's a bigger thing of reallocating space in the longer term and creating cities and towns and roads and streets around the country that really do make cycling and walking a, a safe, attractive and welcoming uh, opportunity. There have been huge improvements in air quality in Britain's towns and cities during lockdown. Mr Shapps says he hopes we'll use the opportunity it has provided to find cleaner, greener and healthier ways to get around. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News, Waltham Forest. Senior clerics are urging the government to act cautiously before allowing places of worship to reopen. All churches, mosques, synagogues and temples closed their doors almost two months ago, but some worshippers are now asking for their buildings to be reopened following the lead of Germany last weekend, as our religion editor Martin Bashir reports. We need to physically be with Jesus more than we need our food. And please open our churches. From pews to pulpits, some people want their churches to reopen. I mean, there's a huge groundswell at the moment. You know, there are tens of thousands of Catholics across our diocese. Many write to me, they email, they say, when can we come back? Across the country, places of worship have been closed for eight weeks, from cathedrals to the largest Hindu temple outside of India. So is congregational worship about to come back? The Bishop of London says the calculation is much more complex than just unlocking the doors. When we open our church buildings, we will still have to ensure physical distancing. We'll have to make sure people can wash their hands on the way in and on the way out. We won't be able to, likely not to be able to use hymn books or service sheets or sing. So whatever we do, we have to plan for it uh, in a very sensible way. There has been an upside to the lockdown. Live streaming of services and hymns, like this sung by individuals from denominations across the country. But the lockdown has been particularly challenging for Muslims, who are midway through the holy month of Ramadan. An imam in Leicester believes their religious practices present a unique challenge. I am not convinced that we can maintain social distance. The first thing is the removal of footwear. And then it's the washing, the ritual washing. And then going into the main prayer hall where you can uh, keep the two meter distance. But we are talking about large numbers and the majority of the mosques that we have consulted are of the view that they do not wish to open during Ramadan. Last weekend, German churches reopened, with strict vetting, limits on numbers and no congregational singing. Religious groups in Britain are waiting to hear whether they can join their continental cousins or remain locked out for a while longer. Martin Bashir, BBC News.